to meet those costs as a consequent cutting of service uh, of, of service levels that we can see by example and you can all talk about I'm sure in your communities I'm no expert on on Massachusetts and I'm certainly no expert on Massachusetts uh, town government but I'm sure the communities here are feeling the stress that communities all across America are feeling and certain communities in, in New York are feeling well then we have to think about that bond market its stability its underlying the underlying reliance of many retired people and many people in general upon income from that bond market and what happens if concerns about that bond market elevate uh, as much capital has retreated to the bond market both on the private side and on the municipal uh, side in recent months so my second you know set of examples um, just talk, is just uh, to illustrate size and I talked about employment I talked about the bond market According to uh, government statistics, the size of, of uh, the government, the government was about 40% of the gross domestic pro product of the United States. Um, of the, uh, uh, and more of that was state and local government spending than national government spending. So our, our preoccupation with national government spending because of its magnitude is, of course, uh, compelling, and our concerns about whether we're doing the right things fiscally, whether we should be emphasizing deficits to a greater degree than we are compared to some of the other concerns in, in trying to manage a rather, uh, a rather recalcitrant economy uh, are important. But the, state, the condition of state and local governments is very important too. It's important for another reason than its size. It's important because it tends to be what we call pro-cyclical. What that means is that we have a balanced budget requirement New York, notwithstanding, we, <laughs> we have in New York we have a we have a requirement that you offer a balanced budget, not y that you maintain one, and that and and that's and that's really that's really a, a fact when you read our constitution. Some of us who in another life are trying to change the constitution have been do doing so for a very long time, uh, are trying to change that. But it, most states have, have effective balanced budget requirements. That means that they have to tax more when they don't have enough money to pay their bills and take resources out of the economy. Um, so uh, pro-cyclical behavior means that you're, that you're not doing what's necessary, not helping the national government do what's necessary in accord with its fiscal policy. And so the national government has to worry not only about doing the right thing, if you're a Keynesian, doing the right thing with regard to the economy, but also has to worry about keeping the states and localities from doing the wrong thing in order to in order to to make things work out so to speak so the states and localities they're in trouble they're important they're they're important for reasons that we've begun to uh, 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 that, that are obvious uh, they're important for reasons uh, that are less obvious they're important fiscally they're important economically and um, they are uh, by all uh, measures um, in trouble. So that's my first point. That's the obvious point. Maybe it wasn't, if it wasn't obvious when you walked in, and it's obvious now, um, then I'm a pretty good teacher. And, uh, you, and you can, uh, and you can uh, go home happy, I hope. The less obvious point has to do with what I th call the crisis in federalism. Now, those of you who are paying attention to the U.S. Supreme Court know that appointments to the court are a very contentious matter these days, actually far more contentious when, than when I was in graduate school. It's hard to, it's almost hard to remember the 60s when uh, these appointments were almost consensual and, uh, and people could get appointed who were uh, really quite controversial people, former members of the Ku Klux Klan and uh, advisors to presidents who gave quite controversial advice and so on and, and many of them turned out to be wonderful uh, judges and very decent human beings but the Supreme Court has been looking among many of the things it's looked at it's been looking at the degree to which our government system is centralized and there have been t there have been uh, decisions taken that have 
for example, tried to give some substance to the Tenth Amendment of the United States Constitution, which reserves to the states and localities all powers not delegated. Some of you who have studied the Constitution know about that. And uh, have tried to give some, place some limit on the uh, Commerce Clause, which has been a basis for the expansion of federal authority. Um, so in a, in a case uh, uh, having to do with uh, firearms near schools, the, uh, the court, and I don't, I'm not going to give chapter and verse on Supreme Court decisions, but the court found that the national government had o overreached a, a bit into the, into the, uh, into the uh, aegis of uh, state and local government. And this has been a, a great concern for lots of people, you know, that we have a decentral medicine, uh, one of the founders uh, um, in, in Federalist 10 talked about uh, decentralization being a bastion of liberty. He argued that uh, when one p group of people got control of the national government, uh, others w could be left with control of the state governments. And so there'd be always in a decentralized system a locus of, a, of power for people out of power in the, de in, in its, in the, in the uh, periphery of the system. Now, why is that a concern? Well, recently, last year, uh, in order to avoid the kind of teacher layoffs that we will again try to avoid this year, New York State put a, in excess of a billion dollars into education for federal stimulus funding. Now, as a SUNY professor, I was particularly uh, and egregiously offended by the fact that the state had put it into elementary and secondary education and not into higher education, where it rightly should have been spent. That's a joke, but it's so subtle that only I get it. Now, <laughs> now, now the, 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 the fact is that a, there was a big hole that New York couldn't fill. Uh, there was enormous resistance to increasing property taxes, which are, which are the primary resource for school districts in New York and across the, in general across the country, local resources for schools. State aid in New York, although massive, proportionally is relatively uh, well less than half, closer to 40 percent than 50 percent uh, of school aid in New York. And to fill that hole, federal resources were spent and a uh, million dollars came to the New Paltz School District, which otherwise would have had to make cuts or which would involve f uh, firing teachers, because after all, local government is very labor intensive. Uh, most uh, local costs are personnel costs. Now this year, we have another hole, and we'll have another level of federal aid. In order to fill that hole with state money, which we don't have, of course, and with local money, which would require property taxation, we'll not only have to tax for this year, but also for last year. So federal money is supposed to stop. Right? It's supposed to be for an emergency. So we get enormous pressure to persist with the federal assistance that came in temporarily. Now, that has fiscal implications for the national government, of course, because and it elevates national spending, but also has implications for uh, who will call the tune with regard to education policy in America. Now, many of you have been reading about the race to the top and Massachusetts qualifying and the race for the top and it came out in, what, the 20-some states that are still in the running, I believe I heard in the radio. I listened to the radio, um, you know, don't read the internet as much as my kids. But the, the uh, um, point is that the federal government is setting certain conditions, isn't it, for the race to the top? You have to meet certain standards in order to get that qualification. And those of you who are familiar with spending for special needs kids know that the federal government, when it entered into that, when it, when it entered into that field, also set certain standards and expectations and promised money, and not all the money has been forthcoming. Certainly not all the money has been forthcoming in time, but the costs have elevated because of the federal standards. And in fact, the qualifications of people, certainly special, should be, uh, should be assisted. They, they should have 